All right, Calc A B, you have four day two. Uh, office hours, you go with homework. These are the few even problems on it uh, that I assigned two, four, and 34. So you can check those real quick. Pause the video so you can check them. DNA stands for does not exist. Um, this is just barely the answer. So I'm, I'm going to do the homework and then you'll see, you know, the kind of work that I think would be a good idea. And, uh, I did cut the assignment down quite a bit. So make that an opportunity to uh, do less better. Okay. <clears throat> So, first four problems say, well, uh, let's see, number one says, in each part, find the limit by inspection. Part A, as x goes to 8 of 7, guess what? The answer is 7, right? Uh, so, kind of a boring one right there. Uh, part B, the limit as X goes to zero from the right side of pi is pi. Pi is a constant, it just doesn't change. C, limit as X approaches negative two of three X is negative six. D, the limit as X approaches three superscript plus from the right side 12y is 36. So write the problems down, write the answers, box your answers. All right. Number two says in each part, find state limit by inspection. So now this is for a specific function f of x equals x over the absolute value of x. And a says, what's the limit as x approaches 5 of f of x? So, I mean, you could just maybe just plug five in. Five over the absolute value five is one. Okay. Now, it's a little bit, maybe a surprise on parts of these. Negative five. That's actually negative five. It's going to be negative five over the absolute value. Negative five is going to be negative five. Positive five is negative one. Now, this is where it's going to get interesting. C says, if you put a zero from the right side. Now, something you could do that I think might help you understand what's going on is if we graph this, x over x is just one. But when x is positive, it's a positive, positive, which is a positive one. But when x is negative, it's a negative over negative, which is or a positive, a negative over a positive, which is negative. And x equals zero, we have, a, we have an issue. So this is what the graph looks like. Um, <clears throat> So when x is positive, the graph looks like that. When x is negative, the graph looks like this. And then there's kind of like something going on at <coughs> x equals zero. So that's what the graph looks like. Um, so as you approach zero from the right side, you can see that it's approaching positive one. And part D is X approaches zero from the left side. It's approaching negative one. So kind of interesting. Uh, three, uh, they give you a bunch of stuff. They say, given that the limit of as X approaches a of F of X equals two and the limit as X approaches a of G of X equals negative four and the limit as x approaches a of h of x equals zero. Find the limits that exist. If the limit does not exist, explain why. And so then part a says we want the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus 2g of x. Now the properties and limits that we talked about yesterday allow you 
to do the limit of this and limit this separately. So this one's going to be 2, and this one's going to be negative 4, and you're going to get negative 6. So you can do that. B, uh, limit as x approaches A of h of x minus 3 g of x plus 1. Well, we can, we can plug in 0 for h and negative 4 for g of x plus 1 equals 13. C, limit as x approaches A of f of x, g of x. Well, you can evaluate each of these separately and multiply them afterwards. So that's going to be 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And <clears throat> D, limit as x approaches A of g of x squared. Well, you can do the limit of what's inside and then square it afterwards. E, uh, limit as x approaches A of the cube root of 6 plus f of x. Well, you can do the cube root of 6 plus 2, <clears throat> which is cube root of 8, which is 2. F, uh, limit as x approaches A of 2 over g of x. Well, you can do 2 over negative 4 is negative 1 half. G, uh, limit as x approaches a of 3f of x minus 8g of x over h of x is going to be 3 times 2 minus 8 times negative 4 over 0. Well, uh, does not exist. Um, because denominator equals zero. So they said, if it doesn't exist, explain why. So that's number three. Number four is similar, but instead of just giving you all the limits, you're going to have to use some pictures. So some good practice from, so I'm going to draw both of these graphs. <clears throat> so this one has open circle one, kind of goes up like that, and then uh, open circle here, and then a solid circle here, and just like that, and then this one seems to go like that, like that. Okay, so this one is f of x, and this one is g of x. So, uh a is the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x plus g of x. <clears throat> um, so as you approach 2 from both sides here or 2 from both sides here, they're both going to 0. 0 plus 0 is 0, right? B, limit as x approaches 2 of actually x approaches 0 of f of x plus g of x equals, um, well, this one's going to be 2. 
but this one's going to be does not exist. So it's does not exist plus zero, which doesn't really make sense to add zero. It does not exist, but it's a does not exist. <clears throat> and the reason is that uh, for this guy, the one sided limits don't agree. <clears throat> Different than the does not exist on previous problem, which was division by zero. Uh, C, uh, let's see. Um, let's see, C is limit as X approaches zero from the right of F of X plus G of X. So this one, Looks very similar to the last problem, but that one side limit is going to change things because now as we approach zero from the right side, that's going to be negative two, and that's going to be positive two, and you're going to get zero. And in D, limit as x approaches zero from the left, well, that's going to give you a different answer. From the left, this guy's going to two, no, to one, and this guy's going to two, so you get um, let's see, E limit as X approaches 2 of F of X over 1 plus G of X is going to be uh, 0 over 1 plus 0 is 0 over 1 is 0. All right, now I'll see if we can squeeze these other answers in over here. F, limit as x approaches 2 of 1 plus g of x over f of x is going to be 1 plus 0 over 0. So it's going to be 1 over 0, which is does not exist. Um, so, because the denominator equals zero. A G limit as X approaches two or zero plus of the square root of F of X would be the square root of negative two, which would be does not exist. <clears throat> because <clears throat> it's not in the domain uh, or it's imaginary or you know you can't take even roots of negatives let's see h limit as x approaches zero from the left side of f of x <clears throat> well that's going to be the square root of positive two i'm sorry square root of positive one uh, which is one so there you go. Just a little practice with uh, properties of limits. In the next problems, we're just trying to find the limits. Uh, single one-off problems. Let's see. So five says the limit as y approaches two from the left side y minus 1, y minus 2, y plus 1. Um, now, if we just plug the value in it first, you know, 2 minus 1 is uh, 1, times 2 minus 2 is 0, over 2 plus 1 is 3. It's not negative 2, it's positive 2. And uh, we're going to get 0. All right. Um, <clears throat> 7, limit as x approaches 4 of x squared minus 16 over x minus 4. So we're just going to plug numbers in first, and we're going to get 0 over 0. Okay, which means we should probably look for a hole in the graph by factoring. So we're going to factor it, x plus 4, x minus 4, difference of squares. And sure enough, there's a hole in the graph. We're going to plug 4 into what's left. The answer is 8. 
9 limit as x approaches <clears throat> 1 from the right side of x to the fourth minus 1 over x minus 1 gives you 0 over 0. So you should probably try and factor it. And uh, that's this is a difference of squares, which then has another difference of squares in it. <clears throat> Right, x plus 1, x minus 1. Now you can't factor the sum of squares, but it doesn't really matter anyways. So here's the hole in the graph. And then you're going to plug 1 back in. This is going to be 2. Times 2 is 4. All right, 11 is the limit as x approaches negative 1 of x squared plus 6x plus 5 over x squared minus 3x minus 4 is 0 over 0. So we're going to try and see if we factor the whole out. Factor the top, x plus 1, x plus 5. Bottom, x and x. Pair numbers multiply to get, together get negative 4, but added together get negative 3. So it's going to be minus 4 plus 1. And there's the whole. And we're going to plug negative 1 in, we're going to get 4 over negative 5, so negative 4 fifths. Okay, negative 4 fifths. All right, 13 um, limits as t goes to 2 of t cubed plus 3t squared minus 12t plus 4 over t cubed minus 4t. Plug 2 in, you get 8, plus 12 is 20, minus 24 is negative 4, plus 4 is 0, 8 minus 8 is 0, you get 0, 0. So um, we could try grouping here on the top because it's a cubic with four terms, even number of terms, cubic uh, grouping might work. I don't know if it's worth it, but uh, we could take a negative four out. Yeah, that doesn't work. So grouping is not going to work. So we're going to probably have to do like synthetic division. We don't need rational root theorem though, because we already know that two is something we can divide out. Now, we should go ahead and factor the bottom. We will in a second. The top is what we need synthetic. The bottom we can use uh, just these uh, greatest common factor. 1, 3, negative 12, 4. 1, 2, 5, 10, negative 2, negative 4, 0. Hopefully we get a 0. So then limit as t goes to 2 of t minus 2, t squared plus 5t minus 2. Over on the bottom, we could take a t out, and then it's t squared minus 4, which we could factor more, t minus 2, t plus 2. So t minus 2 is drop out. That's a hole in the graph. And then we reevaluate, plug 2 in here. It's going to be 4 plus 10 is 14. It's going to be 12 over. 2 times 4 is 8. So final answer is uh, take 4 out of 3 halves. Alright, 3 over 2. Okay, number 5. Limit as t goes to 1 of t cubed plus t squared minus 5t. Oh wait, shoot, that's 14. <clears throat> 15. Limit as x goes to 3 plus of x over x minus 3. So if you plug 3 in, you get 3 over 0. But it does make a difference. What kind of 0? Is it positive or negative? Is it 3 plus means you're approaching from the right side, like 3.001. You could just think of in your head. It's not a technical way of doing it. So it's, this is a very positive small number. So it's going to positive infinity. And uh, technically does not exist, but that's the answer we're going to write. Um, let's see. 17. Uh, 
uh, this one we get 3 over 0. But because it's two sides, one side's going to go one way, one side's going to go the other way. They're both going to some kind of infinity. So two-sided, we're going to we're going to just say does not exist. Blows up, and right infinity just doesn't make as much sense because they don't agree. And even if they did, it's just weird. One side, we can do infinity. Okay, nineteen limit as x approaches to superscript negative. Now, if you plug 2 in there, that's positive 2. It's going to be 2 over 0. Um, now, what I think would be helpful is to factor this. This one is going to 4. That's not the problem. This is the one that's going to 0. And we're approaching 2 from the left, so that's like 1.99999. So this is going to be a negative small amount. So that's going to be negative infinity. Um, 21 limit as y approaches 6 superscript plus y plus 6 over y squared minus 36. That's going to be uh, 12 over 0. Now again, I think factoring it makes it way easier to figure out. So this is just going to be 12. That's not the problem. This is going to be the one that's 0. And we're approaching 6 from the right. So it's going to be a little bigger than 6. It's going to make it positive. Okay, um, 23, limit as y approaches 6 of y plus 6 over y squared minus 36 is going to be 12 over 0. Well, that we're going to say does not exist because it's two-sided. One side, it's going to go to positive infinity. The other side is going to go to negative infinity. Even if they both went to the same, Kind of infinity, it's not appropriate for two-sided. All right, let's see, 25 limit as x approaches 4 superscript negative, 3 minus x over x squared minus 2x minus 8. So um, Plug 4 into this, it's going to be negative 1 over 16 minus 8 minus 8 is 0. Now, I think it makes it way easier if we can factor this. Uh, negative 4, positive 2. So this is going to 6. That's not the problem. This is the one that's going to 0. And we're approaching 4 from the left, so that's like 3.999. So it's a very small, tiny negative number. But the top is negative, right? So it actually goes to positive infinity. So you get you have to look at what's going on on the top too. Um, let's see, twenty-seven limit as x approaches two scripts two superscript plus over one over the absolute value of two minus x. Now this is going to be one over zero, but we're approaching 2 from the right, so that's like 2.001, so that's going to be negative 0. So you might be like, oh, well, that's going to be negative infinity. Yeah, but you, you're taking the absolute value over, right? So that's going to force it to be positive, and it's going to end up positive infinity. 29, limit as x approaches 9 of x minus 9 over the square root of x minus 3 is going to be 0 over 0. So this is potentially a whole issue because we get zero over zero. So we want to factor it. And we did one like this in class. We might be, oh, I can't factor it. Well, square root of x plus three, square root of x minus three. It could be like a difference of squares. Right? There's the whole plug nine in, square root of nine is three plus three is six. <clears throat> okay, um, and then 33, uh, you're given a piecewise function, which should probably be good to write down. And uh, part A is supposed to find the limit as x approaches 3 from the left side. 
of f of x. Now, what you can interpret that as, if we're approaching 3 from the left side, that means that means we're doing the x minus 1 part, which is going to be 3 minus 1, which is going to be 2, right? And b, as we approach 3 from the right side, that's the same thing as writing the function that's described for the right side of 3. That's 3x minus 7. So it's going to be 3 times 3 minus 7 is 9 minus 7 is 2. And then C is asking you to do the overall limit. And the work you just did is going to help you because they both agree. And the answer is 2. So uh, 34 piecewise function gt equals t squared t greater than or equal to 0, t minus 2, t less than 0, a final limit as t approaches superscript or 0 superscript negative. So that's from the left side, which means we're doing the same thing as t approaching 0 from the left side and using t minus 2. So that's going to be 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And then b, limit as t approaches 0 from the right side, is the same thing as writing limit as t approaches 0 from the right side of t squared, which is going to be 0 squared, which is 0. So then part c, when we take the limit as t approaches 0 in general, two-sided overall limit does not exist because the two sides don't agree. So if you were to graph this piecewise function, there would be a jump there. All right. <clears throat> I hope that helped. I hope you're starting to feel really good about all these different limit issues.